So no one really knows what production is. I feel like people on my team still don't really know what production is. Let's try and demystify it for you. I'm gonna go through some of the random shit I've had to deal with in production in a week. If you've been watching all of my videos and you think she was standing there in the last one, she looked like that in the last one, it's because I am here. I am on the same day. I'm filming all my videos at once because smart, save time and makeup. <laughs> Production is quite systematic and what I mean by that is every week we tend to do the same things. However, like any other job, no day is complete. No. no day is completely the same and so there are hiccups and random issues that I have to deal with. It was last week that I was getting all these things come through and I think why have I got so many random things this week? And I thought hey this would actually be a perfect video to share with you guys that production isn't always the same. So I've done a couple of videos on day in the life as a production assistant but I've never really talked about like the random stuff that I have to deal with. I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got six issues things random shit that I had to deal with and I'm going to try and run through it and hopefully put some visuals on the screen for you guys to see clearly as well so this was all last week so I'm just kind of like recapping it all so first of all I was put on the naughty list for invoices <laughs> and I'm sorry to manager basically we have to process invoices every fortnight so I usually get them from like typesetters and the printers you have to process them obviously within a given time because you have to send the money to the suppliers but I was put on the naughty list which is basically just an email saying you've got outstanding invoices that you need to do and the actual issue is that is because there are two Eleanor Roses at Bloomsbury spelt the same Eleanor Rose in Bloomsbury in the academic division however I'm in production and the other Eleanor Rose is a designer and so what often happens as you can imagine we get each other's emails and we also get each other's invoices and so a load had been sent to her instead of me and so they were waiting to be redirected and then they were sitting in my phrase and also to do with the fact that the supplier just bulk sent loads at once or finance sent it to me all at once or whatever it wasn't kind of spaced out like it usually is so basically that's one thing that I had to deal with just basically process them as soon as possible because I don't want to be on the naughty list. Um, I think I've only been on it like once before when we were back in the office. Obviously invoices is a thing that I have to do in production in my job all the time but this processing it quickly and urgently like that isn't normal so I was going to include that. Another thing is I am often in contact with the editorial team and sometimes there's a bit of a um, bit of kind of confusion I guess about what production do and what editorial do. So I had someone from editorial ask me what an orchid ID was and I was like I don't know. <laughs> um, I didn't know if I was supposed to know it or what. I was trying to read through like the email thread that they'd forwarded on and I was like, I genuinely don't know if I'm meant to know this or not. So I brought it to my manager who is the head of academic production. And I was like, hey, editorial have asked me what this means in our catch up. And she was also like, I don't know. <laughs> and so we kind of Googled it and it's like an, um, I'm not gonna know what it stands for now. My something, something like that. It's an ID code basically. And it identifies an author when, I think it's typically when they have like similar names to each other, say like John Smith. I'm sorry to all the John Smiths out there. But but yes, yeah, so it's like an identifier for them basically. I'm not sure if you have to pay for it or what. The author had emailed the editorial team and said, do I have an orchid ID or do I need to set one up myself? Editorial team didn't know so they came to us. What I had to say um, and what me and my manager spoke about is in our internal system at Bloomsbury, we have individual IDs for all of our authors. So there would be no reason for us to create by whatever this orchid ID. So I basically went back to the editorial team and said, no, uh, this person doesn't have an orchid ID as far as we know, because we wouldn't have set it up. This isn't something that we do in production if they want to go ahead and get one by one I don't know how it works then they can do that but we have an internal code so we wouldn't need the extra one if that makes sense so that's just um, something that I was dealing with over a couple of days because I had to sort of tell them that I didn't know and that I'd bring it up on my next catch up with my manager I'd deal with it with my manager etc another one was from the editorial team someone asked me to update the ebook files for a pack so a pack is like a, it's like a set of multiple volumes of a book they're often sold like as one because the author wanted to make sure the corrections were made I looked in our system and found that there weren't actually any ebook file was there and when I looked on our like content management system I found that it was actually listed as abandoned and so we weren't like going ahead with that ebook anymore so I basically just said that and I made a note in our content management system that if we are going to reprint the book again in like paperback or hardback to incorporate these corrections but told the editorial team unfortunately we can't do it for the ebook because the ebook doesn't exist anymore another thing that happened in this random week was the operations inventory managers team was were checking with me to make sure that stock had actually been delivered for one of my reprints so reprints is where a book has already been published but we're low on stock in the warehouse we need to reprint it again we have in our content management system scheduled so a date when it's supposed to be due but it didn't say they had been in the warehouse and so they were asking me to confirm so I just went to the printers and asked them to confirm that it had been delivered and it was <laughs> at Bloomsbury in production we don't we don't typically deal with like the distribution delivery side of it we usually just like give it to our UK warehouse give it to our US warehouse and that's normally kind of as as far as it gets so yes that was literally just 
asking the printers to confirm and then forwarding that back on to the ops team. Another one that came through was to do with invoices again and this was directed to the wrong person in the team. In our team we have a lot of people beginning with E and so I kind of get that it's confusing. I was like oh maybe that's why I keep getting this person's invoices and this wasn't the other LMRs either by the way. And so I emailed the printer and was like hey do you know why I keep getting this, these because it wasn't a couple it was like I'm gonna say like 20. I was like it's just annoying just having to keep redirecting it to the right person and they basically said well we code the invoice against whoever raised the purchase order and then I remembered I was covering this production assistant while they were off on annual leave for a couple of weeks and so I was dealing with all their titles which meant I was raising the purchase orders which meant the invoices get sent to me. So that's kind of a learning curve for me as well because I don't know why I just never really thought of that but I suppose obviously they check who sent the purchase order and code it against that. Another thing was to do with NIPOD so that stands for New and Paperback Print on Demand and these have like key date schedule and a actual publication date so that we have to stick to and in production we take in any corrections from the hardback that needs to be incorporated into the paperback but these corrections usually have to be approved by the editorial director if it's not like author affiliation copyright reasons etc so I was being asked to make sure that these corrections had to be made and I said well actually you need to make sure that this has been approved by the editorial director they were actually out of office so I had to contact their urgent contact because there's because there's a deadline and I hate contact people's out of office or whatever but it need to be approved because it was already um, sort of past the deadline and it got all approved so that was all okay it's just the fact that it costs more for extra corrections so every page per corrections it costs more and um, so obviously we want to avoid it as much as possible unless it's like for copyright reasons or, or for affiliation or whatever but yeah that's just another thing and then finally on nipples again so this is another new paper account on demand this was my fault I gave the typesetters the wrong TPS so the trim page size so we have a lot of um, typical TPSs so 234 by 156 millimeters and 216 by 138 millimeters or 140 millimeters and these are probably like the most common ones that I tend to use for nipples and just when I was doing bulk of them because I had about 30 to process at once so while I was bulk, bulk doing it I sent them the, I mixed them up basically and they came back to me and said hi we're trying to typeset this make sure the files are okay but it keeps being cut at the edge they sent me a couple of sample pages and I was like Oh, I checked our system. I was like, I'm really sorry. I gave you the wrong TPS. It should be this. To which they're like, okay, much better. Here's the corrected file. That's just communication with typesetters, I suppose. And appreciate them obviously sending me the sample page to explain as well. And then I could see that it was my mistake. I need to check more clearly next time. I, I think that's the thing with production as well. It's very heavy on like attention to detail and numbers. So that was that. Um, and I think that that's kind of all the weird stuff that happened last week. Obviously, I was doing my normal schedule work as well, but they're the kind of random things that popped up that I had to deal with. Let me know if this. This was kind of like interesting or useful in some way because I think that you never really know what a job is like until you're actually like in it and experiencing it so I want to kind of show you guys as much of it as possible so if there's any other videos like this that you want to see then let me know and I shall deliver but for now please make sure you're subscribed catching up on all my videos and hopefully see you in my next one bye